folks. All right, it's a bit of a different conversation today. I actually wanted to spend some time and take you through something that I've been talking about over the last couple of weeks. Actually, it's even a couple of months. If you've been uh, reading my newsletter, if you've been jumping in at my live streams, I have been talking about this thing called the Pokemon Bund. Now, for those that are new here and have no idea what I'm talking about, and there's probably a lot of you that have been here for a while and still have no idea what I'm talking about. The Pokemon Fund is essentially an idea that I had about building a self-sufficient Pokemon collection. And it's a way to have fun at the same time, but also build a bit of a side hobby or a side income while doing it also. Now, just to be frank, I have done this actually before. I actually um, started as a little side project back during the pandemic, but due to the negativity and due to the hate that I received from it, uh, for it, sorry, I, I I stopped doing it and I deleted all the videos and I gave up on it. So that, that took a little bit for me to just get back to a confidence level to be willing to do this. I started doing live streams, started to do a bit more of the Pokemon stuff. I mean, the whole Pokemon stuff on the channel has always been about just really having fun, building a bit of a collection for myself, but also we've done a lot of charity fundraising for Backpack for Vic Kids. And I want to intertwine all of that together bringing in my skills as having my own business while bringing in the fun of building a collection for Pokemon while at the same time hopefully to be able to raise awareness and make some dollary dues for Backpack for Vic Kids. Uh, so we're going to talk about that today. I am actually in the, um, in the storage unit today because I hadn't planned to do this video today but I realized I didn't have my other video ready to be able to on my normal Wednesday release. So here we are doing it here um, but let me give you a bit of an understanding of what's the intention of the Pokemon Fund and it's basically breaking down into three pillars. We're going to go through that and then I'll take you through a few more things and we might even open up some Pokemon cards today as well. So let's get into it. So there are three pillars and focus areas of the Pokemon Fund, right? It is to have fun. It is to build a side, a side arm business. So it's basically to build in another income revenue stream, but at the same time, it's to build a collection. And the idea is to start with a certain budget and to build a collection based off that. Now this in theory does not usually work and it's not really realistic. So we're gonna see how we go. We're gonna see if we can push it to its boundaries and to its limits. And if not, we'll have to adjust it and have to go on the way. But the intent is really just to have some fun opening up some Pokemon cards, starting with a, a minimal budget and see if we can build the collection from ripping the packs, seeing what cards we get, selling what we don't want or selling some of it or selling all of it and then basically taking the funds back again and then going out and buying what I want, buying some more stuff to open up. We might even do some giveaways as well and see if we can then fund my Pokemon collection. Along the way, I also wanna make sure that I am giving back. So whether it's to you guys during my normal live streams, but there will be additional content around this whole theme of the Pokemon Fund. The main thing that I also wanna call out is 10% of the profits of all of this will actually be going to Backpack for Vic Kids. They don't know about this. I'm doing this as a little side thing that I wanna do as a hobby or a little bit of a side business, I guess. And that's really the intention there. So there are three avenues of how this will kind of come to life. And I've taken some notes here, but essentially number one is eBay. I'm gonna be launching another eBay store. I'm gonna be opening that up. I'm gonna be listing things on there that I don't want that I'll be selling via the Pokemon Fund. And so if we opened up a pack today and we got a really big card or a really big hit that I think isn't necessarily relevant to my collection, let's sell it, get some more dollary dues, and then we'll do it all again and buy the stuff that I actually want, buy some stuff to be able to open up, have some fun with you, and hopefully make some money for Backpack for Vic Kids. Number two, other live streams. Now, I currently do do live streams on a Wednesday at 8.30 p.m., and that's just really to have fun. I will start to integrate some of this into that. However, I wanna do some other special events. I wanna do some out of my normal schedule stuff just to hang out, have some fun, open up some Pokemon cards that would be purely for this process or I guess this hobby or this, um, you know, I guess series that I'm creating. But really it's also just to have some fun and hang out with you guys. And then there's part three of this, which is documenting that journey. And I'm gonna bring in the elements of building out the eBay store, how I'm doing, how I'm managing the stock, how I'm actually getting focused, how I'm learning to sell Pokemon stuff on eBay as well, because I don't really sell a lot. I've sold a few cards that I've pulled here and there, but not as a business. And I think that's gonna be a bit of a, a learning curve and a bit of a fun learning curve. And I wanna do that with you because there's probably others like me that wanna sell Pokemon stuff, or look, it might not even be Pokemon stuff. I still think you could learn from this process, from this documenting journey and take something from it and apply it to your own lens. 
Maybe you want to sell Matchbox cars. I don't know. So if you haven't picked up from now, how does the fund actually work? So the fund goes like this. It's a self-sustaining fund in which through the leverage of unique purchases, opening packs and finding deals, I will be able to build a collection that I want. Now to do that, there is a couple of characteristics or some key criteria that we have to make sure we manage to. So we have to keep the spending tracked. I have to monitor it like a hawk. I have to figure out what I'm going to sell, what I'm going to resell, what I'm going to uh, keep, what I'm not going to keep, and what are the things part of the plan and not part of the plan. This is all going to be a bit of a <laughs> fluid experience until we get into a bit of a groove. I'm going to invest in some of the stuff. So some of the items that I purchase will be purely for putting on the shelf and we'll come back in a whatever time it takes. One year, two years, five years, who knows? And then of course, I mentioned that I want to integrate this all into Backpack for Vic Kids and raise some money for Backpack for Vic Kids on top of all the other stuff that we usually do on a yearly basis. So there are a set of rules that we need to make sure um, I'm putting out there. And look, these might have to change. I don't, I don't have this figured out, but I, this is what I wanted to start with. And I think having like restrictions or constraining yourself enables you to think out of the box. And the first thing is I'm starting with a $250 budget. That's what I'm starting with. I'm gonna allocate a percentage of that product to be vaulted whether it's 10% or it will depend on what we purchase. But for instance, if I purchased a whole case of Pokemon booster boxes, Pokemon booster boxes, there would be a percentage of that that I would keep sealed and will put away to the side for maybe to maybe sell later if it goes up in value. I don't really want to bring in other dollars unless we become bankrupt from the kitty. Uh, so we'll see how long that takes, but I am open to receiving free products or, you know, um, I don't really want to take money from people for this, but if people want to send out, you know, a pack of cards or something and we open it up for the fund and see if it helps my collection or if it actually just builds the kitty up, by all means. From a business perspective, I think we need to make sure we've just set some boundaries around profits and things like that. So I'm not going to touch any of the profits myself until I hit at least a minimum of $100 profits. But realistically, this is going to be a side hobby and I want to use all the money possible to really reinvest it, go get more stock and have a bit more fun or put it back into the business. I don't think this is going to be, you know, me making millions on the side, maybe one day, but definitely not in the short term. So just to be frank on that, I won't start touching profits until they're over a hundred dollars, if that's for myself, that is. Um, but ideally the focus is really to have fun, buy and reinvest the, you know, the, the capital into stock and to do the whole process again, but also to raise money for Backpack for Vic Kids. We also need to build a bit of a rainy day bucket. So I will allocate some money through basically using a process of divvying up the, the money that comes from eBay or through sales and put some of that money away for a rainy day in case we need to tap into that for a big purchase or something like that. So a bit of a model of how that will work. It might change as we progress, but that's really what I'm thinking at this point in time. And look, some of the ways we could look at this, and I'll put this up on screen, is maybe the profits. As, as money comes in from eBay, the profits will be about 11% of that income. I'll put money away for operating expenses, such as 40% of that. Uh, purchases, for new purchases, I wanna make sure I'm allocating 40% of that as well. And the rainy days, basically, so that we've got some spare lives in case we do run out of money or things like that, will be 9% and that will go into a different bucket. Uh, but at the end of the day, it's really just to have fun and see if we can create it into something bigger and special and greater. There will be the concept of those vaulted items, the things that I purchased that I'm like, let's put that on the shelf. Maybe we'll come back to it in a, you know, six months down the line, one year down the line, or maybe it's something that we use for a break or to raise money for backpacks or something like that. So trying to bring in some different avenues to have a little bit of fun. The core of it is, yes, it's going to be a business, but it's not focused on building bank. It's focused on having fun building a collection, and also hopefully giving a little bit back to Backpack for Vic Kids, and hopefully you guys as well, somehow through live streams and giveaways and things like that. This is completely separate to my normal giveaways that I do in my live streams. So you're probably asking, well, Chris, what, is, what are some of the collections that you're trying to complete? Well, at the moment, I'm trying to finish my Vivid Voltage uh, master set, um, well, the full set basically. Um, I think I actually might've actually done that. I think I got one more card that I got to get, but I've still got Chilling Rain. I've got Brilliant Stars. I've got uh, Pokemon Go, and I've also got, uh, I think it's Scarlet and Violet base set as well. I haven't really been collecting anything else because I want to complete those things before I start jumping on something else. But I think as we start to get some momentum, I might start making some more decisions around what am I collecting next? There is some other things that I want to really dive into, and I love Torchic, Combuskin, and Blaziken, and I want to collect all those cards. I really do. So that will be one area that I want to dive into. I'm also collecting every single ETB from the Scarlet and Violet era onwards. I've started that already. 
And of course, I'm not going to bring in all the collection that I already have. I will share that, but the idea is to continue to build that using this as a fund. I also would love to get one of those collaboration cards which has to do with Mario or Luigi or some of the crossovers or the little poncho uh, Pikachus. They are awesome. They're way out of my budget, but who knows? One day, maybe. Maybe. And I think also getting a, a PSA. Um, a PSA 10 card would be pretty cool. PSA 10 Blaziken in, in particular. There is a certain one that I really, 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 really want, but we'll see. It's good to have goals. And look, then there's a bunch of other cards that we'll go through as we progress through this journey. So that's really the Pokemon fun. Here's me pouring out my heart, just just a kid, just wanting to have some fun and open up some Pokemon cards. So that is the Pokemon fund. In terms of cadence, how regular this will be, when will we do it, how will I do it, figuring it out. It will probably supplement content when I don't have thrifting content. And it will also probably be a bit more spontaneous when maybe I don't have running content. And I would like to also bring in some spontaneous live streams where we just hang out, open up some cards, whether it's through the day, whether it's on the weekend or in an evening. And like, this is gonna be non-reselling related. Like, obviously, yes, I'm reselling Pokemon cards, but it's really just to have some fun, build a bit of side income or a little bit of cash or to fund my collection. That's all it is. And hopefully you guys will come along for the journey for the ride. I will be documenting this as well, you know, showing a few bits and bobs, but not to the detail of how I currently do my business because obviously that's quite intense. Like I'm sharing everything. This will be really main, main focus is to have fun. That really is all it is, right? Uh, so with that in mind, I do have some things that I have purchased in advance of this. I'm not going to reveal them today. I would love to know, I want to leave you with this before we actually open up a pack of cards because I did get a couple of freebies that I want to open up. Um, but if you were given $250 right now and you were doing this yourself, what would be your quickest win to think to maybe double or get a bit more from that return? So if you had to spend $50 today, what would you buy to maybe get back $70? What would you buy? Or if you had 250, what would you buy? Um, I've been out of, uh, at the moment, I've been hunting little deals that I can find at Target or Big W or people selling things under cost just to see that I can maximize my money as possible. I've entered a few little giveaways, a few little um, pack battles and things like that to get some of the stock in advance of me being able to share this. So I actually do have some stuff already. And at the end of this video, I'll actually leave you a cutout version of what is the first thing that we'll be opening in the next video. Uh, so we're gonna, I'm gonna leave it there. We are gonna actually open up um, some Obsidian Flames. Now I got this actually for Christmas and I was very excited. So I'm gonna open this up and I was thinking how cool would it be if we got like this crazy big hit and it was going to actually just slingshot the rest of the fund. That would be ideal, but we're gonna open up this pack and uh, I'm gonna do this in reverse. It's not gonna be cut down. This is on the fly. Uh, the beauty is we don't have to do anything too special in terms of tricks. Let's see what we can do. Uh, this is very hard to do. La Vesta. We have Rowlet. We have a Bunnel Buy. I actually have a second pack as well. We have Soul Rock. We have Hundum. We have Gramble. Oh, let's, I mean, that's not a bad card. It's not, not a banger, but it's definitely not bad. And uh, looks like we didn't get anything. Okay, it's a nice little start. Nice little start there. Mel Metal EX. I'll take that. I'll take that. And then I've got one more pack. So I got these two booster blister packs. They didn't cost me anything. They were given to me. So I figured what a, what a fun way to start the uh, the series. And while I get this out, I've actually been going through some of my old um, collections that I had way before I even started doing this kind of thing with you guys. And I actually found a bunch of cards that I actually had my mate pick up during the pandemic. Someone was giving away for free, just a big box, shoe box of Pokemon cards. And I've been going through them. I'm still sorting through it, but I want to take you through some of the stuff that I found because I think it's a great way to start. <laughs> anyway, I'm getting, I'm getting distracted. Let's get on to pack number two. And then I'm going to leave you with a cutout of what is potentially the first thing we'll be opening and see if anyone can guess it. All right, let's see what we can find. All right, we have, this is very hard to do. Pebble Toad. We have a Ziggy, Ziggy, Zig, 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 Zagoon. Scyther. I can't really see my screen, so that's why I can't really read it. All right. He 
here we go. Nothing in here, which is okay. That's all right. We did get one little hint, Mel Metal. It's not going to be worth anything too crazy, uh, but it's cool to kick off with a nice little EX. So that is essentially my premise, my idea behind the Pokemon Fund. I really hope you come along for the journey. If this is not your thing, that's okay as well. It's really just here to... I'm just sharing, having some fun, hoping to find a new way that we can do something together in a different format. And uh, hopefully we'll find some pretty cool cards. We'll make a little bit of dollars on the side and raise lots of money for Backpack of Your Kids. And of course, if you stick around, you'll probably also win something too along the line. So I'm going to leave you with the first thing that we're going to be opening in the next video. Um, leave a comment down below what you think it is. And I appreciate you being here. You have a wonderful day. Cheers. Who's that Pokemon?